Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial where in this one I'm going to show you how to make a tornado which looks kind of, eh, it looks mid, but it's completely made in geometry nodes and the competition cannot claim to do that. So we're making a fucking tornado. By the way, I know I've been making those AI tutorials and I know it's not everybody's thing, so I'm taking a break, doing some Blender tutorials. Um, yeah, this video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best place to build a beautiful website. So you can see this is a lot of nodes. Let, let, let's just hop into it. I'm hoping I can actually make this thing again because I don't necessarily necessarily remember how I made it. So delete everything, geometry nodes, add in any object because we're making that a geometry nodes object and deleting the group input. So we have a blank object. Before we begin, what is a tornado? It's gonna be a bunch of points that we put in a line that we distort in a very special way and then turn into a volume or a fog. That is the game plan, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add in my points. Uh, you can think of this as just points in space at the origin. Let's say we have 5,000 of them. We're gonna take those and we are gonna put them in a line. How do we do that? Well, how do we put them in a straight line, uh, in, for example? Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the index. We're gonna say index, Divide that number by 5,000. Why? Because we have 5,000 points, which means uh, the highest index is gonna be 5,000 divided by 5,000 is one. Zero to one, is, I'm normalizing it in a sense. Take that, combine it with X, Y, Z on the Z axis and put that as position. And now, and now it does not work because we didn't set this to divide. There we go. So now we have 5,000 points. It kind of looks like a double-ended cone. Uh, that's because the points are very big. I'm gonna make them smaller. So you can see, we can make them even smaller. We have a bunch of points that almost look like a, a complete line segment that are stacked vertically. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna add distortion to this so it looks like a tornado. I wanna add this kind of like string-like distortion and then expand it radially. So to add that string-like distortion, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset this by a noise texture using the color and making sure that this is normalized. So always subtract your noise by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and I'm going to multiply this by something, something zero, because I don't want it on the Z axis. So I just want radially on the X and Y. Uh, for the axis that it's going to use, I'm going to do something special. I'm going to use position coordinates, separate by the Z component, because remember, we have a line and the Z goes from zero to one. I'm going to say use that coordinate system for the noise. And what you're going to see this is going to do, or let us do, is we can add, and it's going to kind of look like it's drifting down the line, in a sense, right? Uh, if we set this to be time, you can see it does that. I'm going to multiply it by negative one, and I'm gonna bring down the scale. And now you can see our lines kind of whipping around. I'm gonna lower the detail, and I'm going to decrease, mm, I could either decrease the speed or the intensity. I think decreasing the intensity. So this is gonna make it so that we have a tornado that kind of like whips around, the base of it is changing, because that's how a tornado works, and that motion is whipping up the entire thing. It's almost like we have a string that's sending physics up the chain. And all of this is just an offset, right? We haven't done jack shit. Yeah, you heard me. Jack shit with the position. So how are we gonna do that? Seriously, how are we gonna do that? Uh, I think what we're going to do is we are gonna take our position, and first of all, we wanna maintain the Z coordinate so that doesn't change. Because remember again, let me connect that here. Because remember again, we have a straight line. I wanna preserve the Z coordinate, but for the X and Y coordinates, I wanna expand this out radially. And I'm gonna use that as, a, I'm gonna do this using a sine and cosine function as if this was a radial kind of thing. So uh, sine, cosine, connect, connect, uh, change this over time, connect, and now we have this thing going in a big circle, which is almost what we wanted. Um, I wanna randomize this a little bit. So I'm going to add a bit of offset. So this is gonna be how far along the transition we are. 
I'm gonna randomize this with a random value, which you can see if it's not big enough, it now looks like this sheet, which is almost more interesting. I uh, set this to two pi or above. Um, I think two pi is fine. And you can see how this is kind of the basis for our tornado. Uh, we wanna take this and we want to scale it only on the X and Y axis, keep Z at one, so the Z is maintained. Uh, we wanna scale this by, so again, one, uh, some function that's related to the Z coordinate. So if we make this uh, explicitly the Z coordinate, you can see we get this kind of cone, because as we go up the Z axis, uh, our radius gets bigger, is, is what we're doing here. You know what, we're going flip tat mode. No, it's not comfortable, just no hat mode. Um, that's almost what I want. I want to do a bit of reshaping, so I'm going to throw in RGB curves in here, and I'm going to say make that less until it kind of looks more like a tornado, and also dip this a little so it has kind of that pinching effect. And I think I want the base to not literally be pinched, just have a bit of a radius. So that looks pretty good. Uh, one thing I'm noticing is the actual rotation here isn't fast enough. Um, so, where's the rotation? It's right here. Take that, multiply it by 10, and now these are whipping around much faster. Um, now the name of the game is just adding in a bit of randomness, um, and then we'll be good to go. So, for example, uh, we're multiplying this by that, that, that. Uh, let's add a bit of randomness. So I'm going to add, again, a random value. Make, making sure the seed is different, otherwise you're going to get this glitching effect. And I'm going to have some of them going in a little, some of them going out a little, and that just adds a tiny bit of randomness for, from the beginning. Um, what else can we do to increase Z random anisito? Um, we could do a bit of an offset here. So I'm just adding in randomness in different places. I guess we want a different seed for the random value for this one, just so it's explicitly different. And this one's what's really gonna kinda tear this thing apart. So we wanna make sure it's not too big of an effect, something like that. And I want this to kinda pinch more at the top or expand more at the top, and we have something like this. So this is the basis for our tornado. We can make it look better, but for now, let's turn it into an actual volume. So how do we do this? We're going to take our points, and what do we want them to be? A volume, points to volume. And that's going to give us a big kind of disaster. Bring down the radius, bring up the voxel amount. You could even bring it up to 200 if your computer can handle it. I'm going to bring it even lower, and now you can actually see the uh, elements of our tornado. Okay? Uh, we're going to bring up the density so you can actually see this thing. And now that we can actually see what this is doing, I'm going to add one more source of randomness. So I'm adding a set position using a noise texture. As always, we normalize this. Vector math, subtract by 0.5 or add negative 0.5, and then scale it. So this is without randomness, and this is with a bit of randomness. It just makes it a bit more chaotic. Um, the things that I've done to make this look better in my version, this is kind of the essence of it, is I, one, increase the point ca count. And if you increase it here, you have to also increase it over here. So we're still going zero to one. I also added in some randomness for the radius. So I did a random value. Please don't crash. Uh, random value, set the seed to something different and lowered this a little. So not every point has the same radius. Just that tiny bit of randomness helps out a little. And uh, of course I rendered this as a cycles volume. So I'm gonna go to cycles, rendered view, and we need some kind of HDRI or environment texture to light this thing. So in HDRI, I'm gonna pick this one. And I'm going to go to film and make it transparent. And you can see this is the basis for our tornado. You could add more points, add a bit more detail, uh, but this is how you do it with geometry nodes. So hopefully you learned something in this tutorial. If you want the blend file for the original file, that's going to be over at the Patreon. Link in the description for where you can get access to that. And otherwise, 
Uh, that's the show. Thank you to all my patrons. You guys are literally keeping me afloat financially. And that's it. Thanks for watching. This tutorial has been brought to you by Squarespace. If you do not know what Squarespace is, it is the easiest way to make a website. Just pick a template, start dragging around squares and put them in their space, and you've created a beautiful website, no coding needed. Three features you'd love about Squarespace is one, you get access to analytics, so you can see who is going to your website, demographic type information. Two, you can do social media embedding, so if you have a Twitter feed, you can put that directly inside your website, uh, no need to redirect or anything like this. And thirdly, you have automatic automatic placement in, in a sense, right? You just click and drag, use the templates, and you've made your website. So head over to Squarespace to make your website for free. And when you're ready to take that website live, use my link in the description to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain.